Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. We're coming up on 5 a.m. on February 7th. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. Halfway through the week, we got another great day on tap. Cool this morning as we check out the view outside our studios here at WYMT. 27 degrees as of last check. Nice today, nice again tomorrow. And things are looking a little bit better for Friday, but still that's when the pattern change will start to take place heading into the weekend. Uh, the good thing is that temps will be running above average still heading through the weekend. Temps for the most part are in the 20s this morning, some lower 30s out toward Prestonsburg and Pikeville. It's 30 at Moorhead and 30 down at Harlem. Satellite water composite still showing some clouds coming in from the north and west. Again, big ridge of high pressure. It's been able to nose in and provide the beautiful weather as we've gone through this week. Well, hey, you're going to get a preview of the seven-day forecast. Anyhow, don't look here. Look there. Forecast high with the sunshine today up close to 60. Another nice one tomorrow. The weekend, you can't look yet. First alert seven-day forecast coming up in just a few moments. Olivia? All right, Tim, thank you. House Bill 387 is one of the many bills that has been filed in the Kentucky Legislature and yesterday morning it passed the Education Committee. Elementary school principal and state representative Timmy Truitt sponsored the bill, saying he saw a need for more substitute teachers and felt if more people could become certified to fill that role, it would make a huge difference. Right now, we don't have people to cover the classes, so I'm having to pull people either on on their plannings to cover a class, which is extra work. I'm having to put my classified aides in that position, which they're not getting paid for. So it only makes sense to open up uh, and make it a little bit easier to become that substitute teacher because there is such a need at this point in time. Some of the other co-sponsors of the bill include Eastern Kentucky State Representatives Josh Bray, Chris Fugit, Jacob Justice, Derek Lewis, and Tom Smith. Kentucky health care workers are calling on lawmakers to clear the way for more staffing. They rallied at the state capitol yesterday in support of House Bill 361. The bill would help physicians get licensed faster. Dana Campbell, president of the Kentucky Academy of Physician Assistants, says the current requirements make it harder to fill positions. Presently, in order to be licensed in Kentucky, a PA requires two supervising physicians. And that limits some rural practices who only employ one physician. And so it makes it difficult for PAs to get a job. This year's advocacy effort is hoping to remove that requirement for alternate physician supervision. The bill received its second reading in committee last week. The Kentucky Primary Care Association is sending two mobile clinics to Eastern Kentucky. Its goal is to serve communities that are not close to hospitals or do not have a doctor nearby. The organization purchased 12 mobile clinics with COVID funds. Two of them arrived in Frankfurt Tuesday. The two mobile clinics will head to the Whitesburg area in Letcher County, to the McKee area in Jackson County and Berea. Two people in charge of a number of addiction treatment centers in Kentucky were arrested in Bath County this past week. The incident happened when police received a complaint of a car driving at a high speed on Interstate 64. After following them to a gas station, officers noted both Jason and Mira Ellum were unsteady on their feet and slurring their words after getting out of their cars. John was charged with DUI while Mira was charged with public intoxication. One man is dead after a crash in the Baxter community of Harlan County yesterday afternoon. 81 year old John J. Howard was pronounced dead at the scene. State police say Howard drove into a vacant wooded lot, hit a tree and flipped over. The coroner's office said Howard may have had a medical emergency that caused the crash. The investigation is ongoing. We reported on Monday that police arrested a man who pleaded guilty in a DUI crash that killed four people in Breathitt County nearly 10 years ago. Sean Harden was arrested during a traffic stop on Village Lane in Hazard. He is being held at the Kentucky River Regional Jail. Harden told us from jail that his addiction led to his arrest. 
Hardin appeared in court Tuesday morning. A major investment in the Commonwealth, Toyota announcing a $1.3 billion investment at the Georgetown plant. It's for battery electric vehicle production. Julia Sandor talked with several people excited about what's ahead. I wouldn't change a thing. I would want to continue to, to be here and live here and to uh, just enjoy the growth that we've had. From 1979 to 2024, Jack Connor has seen Scott County grow. With this $1.3 billion investment at Toyota, they'll be bringing new battery electric vehicles, committing to high quality vehicles and long term job stability. The region is extremely good for business too because we're much, we're very much a regional partner with our surrounding counties, certainly from a workforce development perspective as just as well as from an investment perspective. So they probably could have put that anywhere else in the, in the country, but they decided to do it here. And you know, Toyota has always been very good about investing in this community, investing in our people. For Mayor Bernie Jenkins, news like this excites him for the future of their city. I like to get the best, the best for my people, and and I'm going to advocate for our people. And and Toyota's doing the same thing. They're advocating for them, you know, for their company as well. They're advocating for our, our citizens too. Jack Connor, executive director of the Georgetown Scott County Chamber of Commerce, says the county is averaging two to two and a half percent of growth per year. And as more people join their community, he says they'll continue to grow with them. This is a community that's proud of its history, proud of its heritage, but not afraid to grow. In Georgetown, Julia Sandor, WKYT. Since being in Kentucky, Toyota has received more than $154 million in local donations. And since 2021, they've announced new investments totaling $17 billion into their U.S. manufacturing operations to support electrification efforts. Parts of Kentucky will experience a total solar eclipse this April. Kentucky tourism officials are preparing for extra visitors during the event. The April 8th solar eclipse could bring an estimated 150,000 visitors to several western Kentucky counties. But more than 1 million travelers could pass through Kentucky while following the path of totality in Ohio, Indiana and Illinois. And thanks for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Still ahead, we'll take a look at how knowing your blood pressure and ideal weight can change your life. And weather-wise, as we head through Wednesday, got some clouds to contend with. Will that end up dimming the sunshine? We'll let you know. Your first alert, 70 forecasts. Will the mild theme continuing? All coming up after the break. Stay tuned.